April saw the scheduled release of new mid-war kits from Battlefront like the Honey and Tiger tanks, as well as the 17-pounder anti-tank troop, 8.8cm heavy AA platoon, and 10.5cm artillery. There were also dice and token sets, artillery templates and terrain. As you can see here, May has lots of goodies too, with lots of tank sets as well as the first of the new infantry box sets coming out. However, the release that's caused most comment over the last few weeks are the command cards which are also due out in May. Command cards add special rules, warriors and additional force options in Flames of War. Battlefront have said they plan to release one card pack per 4th edition forces book. Use of the command cards is optional and needs to be agreed between players. Command cards can only be used with forces from the book they're created from. So Africa Corps cards can only be used with lists from the Africa Corps forces book. Each card has a name, flavour text, rules text, a points value and keywords. The keywords indicate things like the nationality of the card, whether the card is formation or unit specific, if it alters or adds to the build of certain formations, represents a warrior, as well as indicating any limitations on using the card. There are a number of articles and facts on the Battlefront website which give more detail about command cards. I'll include the URLs to these in the description below. Let's look at the card packs due out this month. First up is the Africa Core Command Card Set. This contains 34 cards. Some of the cards in the set include Soft Skin Transport, which adds trucks and half-tracks to a formation. It adds up to one transport for each two infantry teams, and a transport per gun team. Adding this upgrade costs one point. Rapid Fire costs eight points and gives a unit leader's Tiger Tank a halted rate of fire of three. So the limitations here are that it only applies to Tiger Tanks, and only to the unit leader. For two points, Africa Corps players can add Panzer Knackers. This can only be applied to Africa Corps rifle platoons, and gives the unit's team's anti-tank 3 and 1 plus firepower against top armour and assaults until the end of the turn. The card is then discarded. The Armoured Car Company card adds armoured cars to Africa Corps formations. This expands the formations in the Africa Corps book to include armoured cars. This card has no points cost, but the armoured cars you add have points values. This next card caused a lot of comment when it appeared in the command card FAC. Charmed Life is a one-use card which allows a formation commander to automatically pass an armour or infantry save. The drawbacks are the card must be discarded after use, and it must be played before the roll, so you can't fail a save and then play this card to pass. At two points a lot of people thought this was expensive for a one-use card. Others objected to the automatic pass here rather than allowing a re-roll. There was a feeling that this was a get-out-of-jail-free card, although the points cost, single use and need to play the card before the roll are some pretty serious limitations. Objections were that it was a gimmick and a bit gamey. We'll have to see how these play out in games to see how this works out. Desert Rats also get a box of command cards. This box has 36 cards. These include cards like Portees, this one-point card transforms six-pounder guns into unarmoured tank teams mounted on three-ton trucks. Pip Roberts is a warrior card. Adding this card to your formation gives all tank units that don't have tally-ho a tactics rating of 3+. This is a bit pricey at four points. It doesn't help Crusaders which have tally-ho but will help Grant units. New Zealand Divisional Cavalry adds a New Zealand Cavalry Squadron to British formations. This allows Honey and Universal Carrier Patrols to be fielded. Again, there's no points cost here, but you pay points for the units this card lets you field. Indian Motor Company only applies to motor companies. It means enemy units must re-roll their first successful motivation test to counter-attack infantry units in this formation. The upgrade costs two points. The last card for Desert Rats in this preview is They Don't Like It Up'em. For two points, this card gives the Formation Commander Infantry Team of a British Infantry Formation a 2 plus to hit in Assault. The command cards have met with mixed reaction on Facebook and the Battlefront forums. Some people like the increased options and flavour provided by the cards, but others have objected to paying more for features they felt should have been included in the Forces books. The other card set due out is the Fog of War Objective Cards. These cards give mission objectives and vary ways to earn victory points. These cards can be hidden or shown and some are persistent. Players can choose cards from a shared deck 
or each player can construct a deck of 10 cards and draw from their own deck. To use the cards, players follow the free-for-all or dust-up mission rules, but don't place objectives. These are determined by the cards drawn. The players need to agree on a number of victory points, with 6 or less making a fast game, and 10 or more being a long game. 8 points is the suggested starting total. Each player chooses 3 cards at the start of their turn, playing one and returning the discards to the bottom of their deck. Players can have up to 3 active objective cards. Victory points are scored when the condition of the objectives are met, and the card is discarded if it's not persistent. The card indicates how the objective is satisfied, and how many points are earned from achieving this objective. Again, these objective cards are optional, but just intended to add flavour and variety to missions. So cards are a big change to Flames of War, and one that's met with a mixed reaction. We'll have to wait and see how these play out. Battlefront has had some supply issues this month, needing to find a new manufacturer for the double-sided gaming mats. The new mats are due out in May. Manufacturing problems also saw Crusader Sand spray cans filled with green paint. These are said to be a good match for modern Soviet armour, and Battlefront are selling it at a good price to clear it. Check out their online store. Team Yankee players will be interested at this showing at Salute 2017. Battlefront previewed Red Thunder, the new Soviet book for the game. In addition to the rulebook, there are new miniatures, the T-64 tank and the BTR-60 wheeled APC. The T-64 is plastic and looks like it has the guidance system for gun-launched missiles. However, there's no reactive armour package here, something that was being introduced in the mid-1980s. The BTR is the closed-top BTR-60 PB, armed with a heavy machine gun in the turret. Reports say this model appears to be resin, but that might just be a prototype for a plastic kit. I'm sure more details will surface soon. Both Flames of War and Team Yankee players might want to visit Dice of War. This Australian company has released both DAK and Desert Rats compatible dice. These are available on their own or with a matching dice tin. These complement the new card wallets for storing unit cards for the game shown here. The wallets are available in 20 sleeve or jumbo 40 sleeve sizes. Dice tins and wallets are also available for modern forces for Team Yankee. All is pretty quiet on the Zvezda front this month. I managed to find these images of the upcoming Jagpanther box. There's one eBay seller offering these at the moment, so they must be available. Expect to see more of these this month. The Plastic Soldier Company T-55s were released this month. I have some on order, so when they get here, look forward to a review. In late breaking news, I'd finished this video just as the Plastic Soldier Company released box art, parts and assembly diagrams for the T-55s. In this parts guide, you can see the breakdown of parts and the different versions you can assemble from this kit. It really is a very versatile kit and a great subject for us to have available in plastic. The two-page assembly diagrams show what parts are needed for each version. I'll post these pictures up on the Fog of War Facebook page if you want a more detailed look. PSC have also upped the number of Universal Carriers in their box set from 6 to 9. At the moment that means people ordering these are getting two boxes, one with six vehicles and one with three. I'm assuming they'll make new bigger boxes next printing to accommodate all nine kits. So that's the wrap up for April. Definitely keep an eye out for the Command and Objective cards. This is a very new direction for Flames of War and it will be interesting to see how they work out. Cards are very common in games like X-Wing and even Tanks, but after the mixed reaction from players it may not prove a popular move for Flames of War. I'm going to keep an open mind, but time will tell. <laughs>